If you're a Blender user, or any other 3D app for that matter, you probably know the pain of waiting hours or maybe even days for a single render to complete. Ray tracing engines, especially unbiased path traces like cycles, can make beautiful images with unmatched realism, but those benefits do come at the cost of speed, and as we all know, slow workflows mean that you get to make fewer creative choices. I once made a video about how to increase your render speed in cycles, and I said that the best method was to make sure you're using some appropriate hardware. But have you ever wondered how fast a really powerful PC can render with cycles? Well, this video is sponsored by NVIDIA and scans range of RTX Studio devices. The Studio programs a certification initiative for devices aimed at creative workflows. If you see the Studio badge, it means that this device has been through all of NVIDIA's tests and it meets their criteria for what they consider a really good option for creative work. Scan has a great range of Studio certified devices, not just PCs but laptops too. You can see Scan's whole range of Studio devices at the link in the description. So I recently upgraded my workstation to not one but two RTX 3090s. And since I did that, I've been getting a lot of questions about how this performs, especially in cycles. So I thought it'd be fun today if we just took a look at the performance of this workstation and also ran through a suite of benchmarks to see exactly how it stacks up compared to other options. So first of all, let's talk about the system itself. This is my workstation at the moment. It's a Ryzen 5950X with 32 gigabytes of RAM. It's on an ASRock Tai Chi X570 motherboard. It has three terabytes of SSD storage. And of course, the star of the show is the two RTX 3090 graphics cards. And before anyone starts knocking my PC built-in skills, yes, I am aware that it's not ideal to have one card blown straight into the other one, but this is a kind of crappy case. I'm gonna to have to make a little modification to the case before I can drop it down a slot as all. Well. It's not actually a big problem though, these Founder Edition cards have really good coolers on them. So good in fact that the top card only runs about 5 to 10 degrees hotter at idle than the bottom card, even though the bottom card is blowing hot air straight into the top, so that's pretty crazy. So for the benchmarks I'm going to be using Blender 3.0, which is the newest version of Blender due to be released in about 5 or 6 weeks time. It comes with a new version of Cycles called Cycles X, which is new and improved in just about every way. If you want to play with the new build of Blender, you can get it from builder.blender.org, but be warned, if you have an AMD or an Intel device, it won't work with the new version of Blender. Blender does not support OpenCL anymore, which means right now, Intel and AMD devices cannot render with Blender. For all of these renders, I've kept everything at default settings that came with the benchmark files. The only thing I've changed is to enable adaptive sampling, because there's really no reason not to have that on. By the way, if you're playing with Blender 3.0 and you can't find adaptive sampling anymore, it's just been renamed to Noise Threshold. So the first benchmark I always run is the classic, the BMW scene. To be honest, it's not a great benchmark these days. GPUs are getting so fast that it's really not a very intense scene, which means the bottleneck is more likely to be on the CPU side than the GPU. So the first time you can see on screen here is actually my old CPU. This is what I used to render on when I first picked up Blender, and it's what I actually used when I first started this channel. The results here aren't exactly great, but that's what you get with a decade old CPU. The second result is my current CPU, which is basically the best mainstream CPU you can buy. The results are obviously better, but they're still not great. The RTX 3070 is the card that I've been using for the last year. Then we've got one RTX 3090, and then we've got two RTX 3090s. So all of these GPU results are obviously much faster than the CPU. Part of the reason for this is because these RTX GPUs can use the Optics rendering API. Optics is a software framework that allows Blender to really get the most out of GPU accelerated rendering on Nvidia devices. To use it, you just have to go to Edit, Preferences, System, and make sure you've got Optics selected. So next up, we have the Classroom scene, which is always one of my favourites. I really like this benchmark, not only because it's a beautiful scene, but it's also pretty representative of the type of renders that I make. I do lots of interior scenes that have similar lighting setups to this and similar materials, so it gives me a really good idea of how my device is going to perform with the sort of renders I actually make. I couldn't believe when I first ran this that one 3090 was 16 seconds and two of them was under 10 seconds. I actually found that if I played some of the settings on this and I optimised it a little bit more, it got down to like under 7 seconds. Now, 
when I first started using Blender, I remember I ran this benchmark when I first found out there was benchmark scenes for Blender, and it took 44 minutes for this thing to render out. So like under 10 seconds is crazy. I mean, to put that into perspective, I could render out 293 frames on this current setup before my old computer would be able to render out a single frame. The fishy cat scene is one that quite a lot of people do for benchmarks, but I actually skip it for GPU testing. The scene doesn't take very long to render for a start, so it's not a great test to begin with, but it also has a massive amount of compositing, and that's all calculated on the CPU, so 90% of your render time is really compositing time, and it's all about how fast your CPU is, not your GPU. The barbershop splash screen is a really good example of a heavier scene. There's a lot of stuff going on here and it's a bit taxing on the computer. Generally, it takes a while to render. So something really interesting that happened here, both the single RTX 3090 and two RTX 3090s took the exact same amount of time to render out the scene. Now that might seem weird, but actually makes sense. I think the problem here is that this scene isn't GPU bound, it's CPU bottlenecked, which basically means the GPUs could render this a lot faster, but they're just stuck waiting for Blender and the CPU to give them the information to render this out. That's why it takes 51 seconds for both, because that's how long the computer takes to get the information to however many devices you're trying to render out on. Incidentally, I don't know if you've ever played this benchmarks animation before, but it is a little bit weird. I'm not sure what this is all about. So once those standard benchmarks were finished, I also tried out some scenes of my own. Last week I made a video where I recreated the opening scene from The Terminator. And in that video I mentioned that each shot on this current system took about 10 to 50 seconds to render out, depending on the shot. This shot right here in particular took almost two minutes, 50 seconds on my CPU. It took 32 seconds on the 3070. It took 21 seconds on the 3090 and it took just 15 seconds with the two 3090s. And finally, this shot is from a Bioshock short movie that I've been working on in my spare time for the last few months, although I haven't really touched it for a while. This is an incredibly heavy scene with loads of assets that you can't see out the view of the camera right now. There's volumetric effects, there's depth of field, there's really high resolution textures and lots of them and there's lights through this glass with lots of bounce lighting, so it's a very taxing scene. My CPU for this took eight minutes, 12 seconds. The old RTX 3070 that I was using took two minutes, 45 seconds. One RTX 3090 took 51 seconds and two of them took just 25 seconds. This is the largest gap out of all the tests that I saw between the 3070 and the 3090. And I think that's down to the amount of VRAM on each card. The 3070 has eight gigabytes of VRAM, which in most scenes is more than enough. But in this scene in particular, things were being pushed right up to the limit. The peak memory usage for this scene during rendering was almost eight gigabytes. And if you're actually navigating around the scene in rendered mode, it can easily go up to like 10 or 15 gigs. The 3090s on the other hand have 24 gigabytes of VRAM on each card. If you get one of these bridges, they're called an NV link, you can actually pull that memory together. That gives you access to the full 48 gigabytes of VRAM across the both cards. And that's actually crazy to me because I remember when I owned PCs that literally didn't even have 48 gigabytes of hard drive, never mind VRAM. So that's all well and good for render performance, but render speed isn't the only consideration. What about viewport performance? Well, so far I've found that to be absolutely fantastic too. In fact, it's probably my favorite thing about this current setup I'm using. At the end of the day, you can always wait a little bit longer for render times, but if your viewport performance is bad, the whole experience is just bad. You're gonna really struggle to do creative things if every time you make a change, you have to wait for the viewport to actually look half decent. I mean, last year I made this video about making interiors in Blender, and there's a part in the video where I try to show the lighting setup by turning the lights on and off. It's painfully slow and you really can't tell what the hell's going on because it's just too noisy. But with this new PC setup that I'm using, the viewport sampling resolves almost instantly. I can just toggle the lights on and off and I can see exactly how the scene's gonna look. If I enable Nvidia's optics viewport denoising, I can get an even more accurate idea of how this scene's going to look once it's finally rendered. 
This denoiser is AI powered and I think it does a really good job of keeping most of the fine details in the scene. So when you think about the thousands of little changes that you'll make while you work on a scene like this, it's obvious that if you've got better viewport performance, you're going to be able to get better results faster. So am I saying everyone should go out and buy two RTX 3090s for the computer? Well no, not necessarily, it really depends on your situation. I mean, this workstation is perfect for me because I use Blender professionally, I need to produce videos quickly, which means I need to be able to render quickly, and also I use a lot of VRAM for different applications I use. But if I was a hobbyist, or if I had a much lower budget, I would be looking at something else from the Nvidia range instead. The good thing about Nvidia Studio devices is the fact that there's something for every price point and every use case. I mean, you only have to look at the benchmarks from earlier on, you can see that the RTX 3070 really holds its own very well for what is essentially a mid-range card. It's still got access to optics rendering, it's still got loads of CUDA cores and RTX cores for just the grunt power, it's still got the tensor cores, which means it can use all the fancy AI powered stuff like the optics denoiser, and ultimately it's a very good card that I've used for everything you've seen me produce this year. If you want to upgrade your performance, click the link in the description to see Scan's whole range of RTX Studio devices. I've personally been using Scan since 2009, so I can definitely vouch for their service. They have a dedicated section on the website for RTX Studio devices, including laptops and PCs, so they have something for basically every use case and every budget. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I'll see you in a few days with another video.